Mop is back with a new factory enduro program. We're actually just starting with our enduro experience, so it's the first time YT is having a team. Tasmania is the first stop of the race season. It's definitely a pretty, pretty hard one to get everything here. It's a very little place. It's very hard at the beginning of the season, especially for a new race team, that you don't have any leftovers in stock. So you have to rely on everything just arriving on time. And then getting it around the globe um, is super challenging for a bike racing team. Well, the Uncaged sponsoring is literally matching with our slogan, Living Uncaged. So that's the spirit everyone within the company is living. We didn't aim for any sponsors. We basically financed the full team by ourselves with support of products from companies. The parts a rider picks on the bike are personal preferences. Changing a lot of things, it's nice not to change a lot of things, you know, so um, if you can stay what you are comfortable, the basic ingredients, even little things like grips and saddles and contact points, like there's a lot of things on a bike that, that make a rider feel comfortable, and then if you're comfortable, you're confident. With my own team, I always try and pick components and sponsors that I would choose myself. Maybe some riders on the team might like a different component that I do. The philosophy that you guys are going where the riders can choose every component on the bike, I think is really unique and a cool thing. I've been on teams in the past where you have to run components that you don't like or don't work for you. And that sucks because you can be doing all your training and everything right, but if you don't believe in that product and it doesn't work for you, then it's going to affect your race results. So for sure, I'm a believer of the Uncaged philosophy. Live in Uncaged and setting your bike up Uncaged is definitely a great freedom to a racer. If you're not happy with a part, you have the freedom to actually change it and you don't have to run it because it's a sponsor behind it who pays money for the team. To my knowledge anyway, as a massive geek of this sport, I've never heard of it being done before. Knowing YT the way I do, I think the way they're entering this sport is the right way to do it. I wouldn't be surprised if there were a few of the bigger brands looking quite enviously at this and going, if we could just do the ordering ourselves, and logistically it's trickier, but to actually have the bike as the rider wants it. From my understanding, the team manager role is bringing a team together, taking care of everyone needs. There is plenty of. Making traveling smooth, uh, this is a big thing getting prepared that we have all parts and stuff we may need over the season. The another thing is getting all the accommodations and traveling scheduled. I'm looking very much ahead that nothing big can show up and causing any trouble. Making everyone happy is of course the hardest part. Mainly Change some stuff in Medina to help me hold on with my hand. It wasn't necessarily changed to make me faster, but we put a 190 air spring in the fork, run a coil shock in the rear, and I also threw some cush core. Helps with the vibrations and stuff. So everything I've done is pretty much to help me get through that first race, and then I'll go back to a similar setup that I had at team camp for Derby this weekend. He knows what he wants for sure and I think he just trusts a lot of brands that he's used in the past and a lot of particular products so in time we will test some different stuff to see if we can get a bit more free speed if you like. I want to get comfortable within the team and on the new bike and I really wanted to have a crack at getting another title. It's not been the best start but I'm also not that far off at this point. It's a long season, anything could happen, but it would be great to just get back up to speed and get back on the podium and maybe get a few wins and even have a more long-term view and goal of getting everything dialed towards the end of the year and having a solid off-season and a solid track next year.
so far. I think I'm not that exotic with my setup. I changed tires, rims throughout the team camp, different seat posts with more drop and TRP brakes. Even after first test camp to now, second race, there are now huge changes. Being part of the mob has been really cool so far. I think we're a good bunch of people who get along pretty well. Yeah, it's definitely a dream coming true. I would never have imagined that in my wildest dreams, to be honest. It's almost easy to forget to like enjoy that straight away and you rather just want to make it work and want to show that you like earned it and that's easy getting towards the direction where you add pressure but it's actually just unreal to be in that position and I love it. Don't trust this guy. Yeah, don't trust me. I wouldn't trust Big Chris either. He's always trying to sabotage my race day. Sneaky guy, sneakiest guy. Yeah, Achim is too German. Wouldn't trust a German, never. With Jack, it's been amazing. I can learn a lot from him. We have good times together. We have a good laugh and just enjoy whatever we do. And unfortunately, we're missing one teammate here. It's just bad luck with Casper having had an injury before, but he's also been the one to watch from privateer to factory team to another factory team. So hopefully we see him before the end of the year. I think we've definitely put ourselves in the spotlight with the Uncaged philosophy. I think a lot of teams have been looking at us and kind of envious of what we've achieved in such a small space of time. It's every rider's dream to run whatever products they want on their bike. Whether it works out for us is a different matter. I mean, the biggest risk is financially, right? YT have to support the program 100%. And then the other downside is if a manufacturer doesn't want to provide factory support at the race for the riders, then this is yeah, a huge disadvantage. Yeah, I mean, there's a downside to everything in life, but uh... For me, freedom. <laughs> We're in a fortunate situation where brands are really aligned with our approach and they really like our commitment to performance. Each individual customer for YT might have a preferred suspension or a preferred set of wheels, tires, whatever. I think that makes it interesting for them to follow your team. We changed our product portfolio a year ago, so we launched these uncaged bikes. So we have a wide audience of like different brands spec on our bikes. It allows us on the development kind of side to understand and analyze trends and also see preferences of the top riders. And that gives us the access to like bring bikes with a similar philosophy from the race bikes for our customers. I think it's time that we really promoted the bikes and the components as much as the riders and the racing. So I, I think you, you know your platform is creating something that could be pretty special. It's a huge seal of approval. If someone who's won an overall title like Jack has got everything on the table he could possibly run and is choosing one individual product, I think that's really impressive. Yeah, I think that's a big fella on the cap of whatever brand that is. And think with Warner Brothers on board, the new broadcast situation, we really have an opportunity to bring the sport in a bigger audience, which is a really cool opportunity. And I think there's so many stories to tell across the different platforms, within different media. I'm really excited for this next year, see what we can achieve.